Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial on how to create a table of contents in Bricks Builder without any plugin. Before I show you how to set up the table of contents, I wanted to show you a working demo on how it looks like when we have finished setting it up and you can see that here on the right side of my page. So it's just a pretty simple table of contents with my h2 and h3 headings here and when I start scrolling it will add an indicator of where I'm currently at on my page. So um, when I scroll down it jumps over to the next elements and I have set it up to only recognize the h2 headings so when I scroll to markup, JavaScript, CSS it, it will stay on the full documentation part until I reach the download the files section then it will jump to download the file. So let's see it in action. Here we are scrolling the CSS part here. It doesn't jump and when we reach the download the file section, it jumps over to the to that section. Change log again and leave your comment too. Um, it's pretty easy to set it up. It won't need really, it only needs a few steps. So I'm going to show you how to set it up now. Um, create a page, of course, <laughs> we will need some. And before I can start setting up the table of contents, I will need a few headings. And for that, I'm going to drop here two conta containers. One will be my table of contents and the other container will hold some um, headings in it so that we can see what's going on on the front end while we are doing it. So let's add here a heading, give it a tag of h2 and let's call it first heading and maybe we could add here a h3 heading, let's call it first subheading and then we're gonna duplicate it a few times. So and let's just call this second heading, second subheading. Let's call this the third heading and the third subheading. The fourth, oops, the fourth heading and the fourth subheading. And yeah, there we go. So now we have set up our headings. Um, we could now jump over to our table of contents. Let's add here another heading and call it table of contents. Of course, you could style and layout this whatever you would like to, but I want to show you the, dem the demo as I did it here on my page. And for that, I have used an sticky ele a sticky element here on the right side. So let's make this container also be a sticky one. And for that we are moving here to sticky and let's set it to 60 pixels and okay we need to show it here on the front end and there you can see here it stays on the right side um, so now we could start setting up our table of contents for that we just need to give that container element of the table of contents a specific id um, in my example, I'm using the ID of uh, WCD underscore table of contents. That's the ID you will need. Um, if you want to change that ID to whatever you prefer to, you will have to change it here in the JavaScript code too. So that's one thing you should know. Um, yeah, we have set it up and of course we can skip elements, but I will show you this later because it's, I think it's more visual to show it later and you will, you will catch it easier what I mean with that. So that's pretty much our basic setup. Um, I'm gonna add here a code block on the bottom and copy here my JavaScript code. As I mentioned, you will have to change that ID if you want to have another ID for your container and you can 
you can uh, define here the level of, of depth. So if you if we would like to have it um, also showing your H4 headings or maybe you want to add your post title, you will have to add here the H1 or H4 tag. You could also create a, a link listing, for example, so that it will show all your links on your site with the A tag, for example. So you're, it's pretty up to you whatever or what tag you will um, you will write here inside. So you can you can try something here. Um, that line here is responsible for the for the scroll trigger, so for the indicator. Um, the, the indicator is optional and I have separated it here in, in two parts. The first part is only the table of content and here the second part is the, is the indicator. If you don't want to have that indicator on your site, you will just delete this line of code and I mean you could you could leave it inside but it won't do anything without that second part of code. So that's all you have to know about that code. If you want to have a, a deeper look, you can read the documentation, but that's everything you need to know. So let's paste that code here in my code element. For that, I'm just creating a script tag, pasting the code and close it with the script tag. That would be a full working table of contents. It's it won't look very good, but it would work. So if you can, if you look here, we have now here our headings and they are clickable. So I could jump to the fourth subheading by clicking it. And there you can see we jumped here. Or to the second heading, for example, here it is. Um, we don't have that scroll indicator yet, but it recognizes all the all the headings and as you can see that's what I mentioned earlier it is also including that table of contents um, heading which we want to uh, we don't want to have here and for that case um, there is another class you could add you can add this, this to any element you would like and um, if you do so then it will skip that element for the table of contents so Let's add a class of WCD underscore table of contents underscore skip. And then you can see it's removed from here. So that's a pretty easy way to, to remove certain headings if you don't want to have them in your table of contents for whatever reason. Um, so now that we have set up our table of contents, let's jump over to the second part which is responsible for the for the scroll trigger or for a scroll indicator however you want to call it um, and there you only have to know two things the first one is that i have set up a breakpoint so um, in my example the table of contents is only sticky above um, 1100 pixels so if you jump over to the mobile version i will show it here to you Okay, that's not mobile, that's anything. Um, it isn't sticky here. So in that case, I don't need that, um, that part of code. And that's why I have set up here a, a breakpoint so that it only runs on devices which are larger than that breakpoint. Um, there is also a, se a second thing which is the minus 200 here. Um, and that's responsible for when the, the element will get highlighted. So I'm gonna show it here to you. The working demo element would be, if, if we would set this to zero, the working de demo element would be recognized here. But I have set an offset to minus 200 pixels, so it will get recognized about here. I found it, prettier to do so because it's 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 a bit earlier in the on the page so it's not when it's close to not being seen anymore so yeah but you can you can change that variable to whatever you like to and and maybe find a better option or leave it to, to zero so you can you can experiment with that 
Um, yeah, to make it to make it work, we just copy it and paste it here to our code element just under the first code. So okay, yeah, there it is. Just paste it here, and it it would work now, but we didn't have any stylings for our active class. So what I did here is, or what the code does, is that it adds a class of WCD table of contents underscore active. And here I have styled it with CSS to make it look like that way. So when we copy that code um, and paste it here inside a style tag, so then the active element should should be highlighted, yeah, as you can see, now it gets highlighted. And you can define that in the in the first code. So you could you could um, change that tag here to another tag if you want to have another tag highlighted. So that's pretty up to you. You just have to change it here. Um, there are a few other CSS classes which get um, center, uh, generated by the code and they are all prefixed. So if you have a look at those classes here, it's always a prefix of WCD underscore table of contents underscore, and then it gets followed by the, by the HTML tag itself. So it's pretty easy to you to, to, to name those classes because it's always what you have defined here. Um, so um, for that demonstration here, I will just copy that code. It won't look very cool or fancy. It's just the basic styling so that you can see um, how, how you can address the certain elements. And as you can see there, now they get styled and also have that indicator here. But you could, you could style that to whatever you would like to. I've just used some some padding left here to make it um, be visually clear that it's a child element of the H2 heading here in that example. But yeah, I mean, I'm only using the H2 and the H3 here. I have st I've provided here styles for H1 to H6 so that you have a basic um, blueprint where you can follow but you could you could do whatever you would like to do here. So that's all up to you how would how you would style this. And yeah. I think there is nothing more to add. So if you enjoyed it, please let me know. It's also very interesting for me to know if you had a hard time by setting it up or if it was quite easy for you. So I appreciate any feedback and please let me know in the comments below and I hope you enjoyed my tutorial.